Good morning, boys and girls. We are so glad to see you back with us today. My name is Miss Allison and I'm your host. And this is Miss LaChandra, your teacher. And we're gonna learn some more information today about insects. So have fun. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Miss LaTondra, and I am so excited to learn with you all today. The title of today's lesson is, What Makes an Insect an Insect? Hmm, that's a great question. I wonder, what makes an insect an insect? When we are done with this unit, here are the facts you will have learned. So let's take a look. Get ready to learn all about insects. Insects are the largest group of animals on Earth. There are many different types of insects. Insects live in nearly every habitat on Earth. What characterizes an animal as an insect? Identify and describe the three main body parts of insects and the purpose of each. Describe an insect's exoskeleton. Now, let's look up here at our KWL chart. We are going to review some things that you all learned with Miss Allison. So I want you to pay close attention. So let's start. The first thing that you learned was insects are the largest group of animals on Earth. Wow, that's such an interesting fact. Miss Allison, they learned that with you last time. We sure did. The next fact that you all learned was oceans are the only habitat where insects do not live. Awesome job, you guys have been learning so much. Lastly, you learned that most insects are solitary, but some are social, like ants. Boys and girls, I am so excited for us to learn some new things about insects on today. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another look at a picture at our PowerPoint. Now, I would like for you to look at this collage of insects. Wow, look at these insects. They all look different, but some parts of them are the same. Can you name some ways in which these insects are different from one another? Miss Allison will help us with this. Miss Allison, take a look at these insects. Can you tell us a way in which these insects are different from one another? Yeah, the caterpillar looks fuzzy, but the other insects do not look like they have fur. <gasps> That is exactly right, Miss Allison, very good. The caterpillar is fuzzy, but you know what? These are actually tiny hairs. These are called seta. Now, can you tell us a way in which they are similar to one another? They're all really small. I think I could probably hold them in my hand. That's exactly right. You could hold each of these in your hand. Awesome job. Thank you so much, Ms. Allison. Today, we are going to learn what all insects have in common. But before we get started, we're gonna make some predictions about insects. So I want everyone to look up here. I have a prediction chart. And what, does anyone remember what a prediction is? Yes, that's exactly right. A prediction is just a guess. So let's get started. I want you to predict some things that all insects have in common. I'm going to give you a few minutes to think about it. And while you're thinking, Miss Allison is also going to help us with that. Miss Allison, can you make a prediction of what all insects have in common? I think that all insects eat plants. Hmm, that's a very good prediction, Miss Allison. I know that all insects, I, know, not, I don't know if all insects crawl on plants, but I see them crawling on, crawling on plants all the time. I wonder do they all eat, in, eat plants. Let's add it to our prediction chart. Okay, Miss Allison, can you give us another prediction? Um, I think that all insects have antennas. Hmm, that's a great prediction. All insects have antenna. 
Miss Ellison, I have antenna, and I, am I an insect? No, Miss Latondra, don't be silly. You're not an insect. I'm not. I guess my, in, my antenna aren't real, so I will put this up here under our other prediction. Thank you, Miss Allison. Miss Allison, can you tell us one more prediction? I'm pretty sure that all insects have wings. Hmm, that's a really great prediction as well. So let's add that to our chart. So we're going to continue. We're going to read a little later, and we're going to find out if our predictions are correct or not. So I would like for you all to listen closely because before we get into our read aloud, we're going to talk about some vocabulary words. And these vocabulary words are going to help us understand our read aloud. So take a look at our PowerPoint as we look at these vocabulary words. My first vocabulary word is antenna. Antenna are those feelers attached to the head of an insect that help it sense things. You see his antenna? Instead of a nose, a cricket uses its antenna to smell. Wow, that's interesting. Take a look at these insects. Can you find the antenna on these insects? Did you get those correct? Awesome job, you guys are so smart. Our next vocabulary word is exoskeleton. In today's read aloud, you will hear about an insect's exo or an insect skeleton called an exoskeleton. Say the word exoskeleton with me three times. Exoskeleton, exoskeleton, exoskeleton. Very good, that's a big word. An exoskeleton is a skeleton on the outside of the body. It is the hard body covering of an insect that supports and protects it. Now that's an interesting fact. They have a skeleton on the outside of their body. Where is your skeleton? Did you get it right? Yes, it is on the inside of your body. Good job. Listen to this sentence with exoskeleton. The raindrops rolled off of the insect's waterproof exoskeleton. This is called a suit of armor. How is an exoskeleton similar to a suit of armor? Good job. I hear some great answers. It's outside of the body. It is hard and it protects what is underneath it. Now, guess what time it is? That is right. It's time for our read aloud. I'm so excited to read this, to read, this read aloud with you all. We're gonna find out what things all insects have in common. So, as we listen to this lesson, I want you to Listen for those answers to find out if our predictions were correct, okay? So let's get started, and I want you to look at these pictures as we read, it out, as we read our read aloud. Hello, boys and girls. The last time you gathered to learn about insects, you were joined by a fly, an insect with whom you are surely familiar. I am also a very common insect that loves to live in bathtubs or underneath kitchen sinks. My cousins and I often hide during the day, so you may not notice us. Does anyone know what type of insect I am? I'm a cockroach. Do you think I look anything like a fly? There are millions of insects on Earth. At first glance, we may look very different from one another. What are some of those differences? Can you think of any? What are some ways we are the same? Some insects, like butterflies and grasshoppers, have wings, whereas others, like fleas and microscopic lice, don't. 
Some eat plants and others eat animals. But all insects have certain features in common. I am here to talk about what makes an insect an insect. Our name should give you a clue. An insect's body is built in sections or parts, three parts to be exact. We'll use one of my friends, the ant, as an example. Remember that word microscope, microscopic? The word microscopic refers to things that are very, very small, like something that only can be seen with well or at all with a microscope. All insects have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. The head is the center of an insect's senses, but different kinds of insects can have very different looking heads. The thorax is the middle part of the insect's body. The abdomen is the end of the insect's body, farthest away from the head. Wow, I've never seen an ant this close up before, have you? What do you notice about the heads of these common insects? Do they look like yours? Do they have eyes? Yes, they do, but they are different from our eyes. For one thing, many insects have more than two eyes. Most crickets, like this cricket, have big eyes located on the side of the head. Many insects also have smaller, simple eyes on the tops of their heads. Look closely at this cricket's head. Can you see its eyes? Although some insects see better than others, most insects also use other senses to get information about their environments. Hmm, I wonder what other senses they use. Let's find out. Bush crickets head with, look at this bush cricket. Does it have a mouth? Hmm, I think it has a mouth. What do you think? Yes, its mouth is a small hole at the front of its head, surrounded by mouth parts. You and the cricket both use their mouths to taste and eat. Hmm, what are the parts of your mouth called? I hear some really great answers. So the parts of your mouth are called tongue, teeth, taste buds, and lips. Good job, boys and girls. Look at the variety of insect mouth parts. Some look like sponges. Others look like scissors or needles. An insect's mouth is carefully designed for eating certain types of food. Some insects bite and chew foods. Others suck liquid, still others pierce their foods. Look at these insects. For example, the cockroach, like me. Just about anything, eat just about anything we can find. We have two pairs of jaws for biting, cutting, and chewing food well. Other insects, like the tiny aphids that destroy farmers' crops, have mouth parts that look more like drinking straws. They feed by sucking sap from plant leaves and stems through these tubes. Look how long and sharp this mosquito's mouth part is. Perfect for piercing the skin of its prey and sucking its blood. Ugh. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito? They love to feed on people as well as other animals like horses and birds. Butterflies and bees have long mouth parts for sucking nectar from, from flowers. So now you've seen insect eyes and mouth. What else do you see on the head of these insects? Oh yes, it's those feelers again. Do you see them? Those are the insect's antenna. Their most important sense organs. Insect antenna come in a variety of shapes and sizes 
and helped insects learn more about their surroundings. Hmm, this is quite interesting. So what are some body parts humans use to sense things or to learn more about their surroundings? Very good. Eyes, ears, nose, mouth, and skin. These jointed feelers, such as those on this cricket, are often covered with tiny bristles and pegs, and some are even quite feathery. Antenna are primarily used for smell and touch, although some can pick up sounds or detect movements in the air. Do you see a nose on this cricket? No, at least nothing that looks like your nose. Instead of a nose, the cricket uses its antenna to smell. Eyes, mouth, antenna. What else might you expect to find on an insect's head? What other sensory organs do you have on the side of your head? Right, you have ears. Do you see any ears on this cricket? No, the cricket's ears are located on its legs, attached to the middle section of the cricket's body. The middle section of an insect's body is called the thorax. The thorax has three pairs of jointed legs and usually, but not always, two pairs of leg wings. Notice I said pairs. A pair is two of a specific item. If there are three pairs of legs, how many legs does an insect have altogether? Yes, you got it right. All insects have six legs. Awesome job. Next time, we will look at a cricket's thorax and see if we can spot its ears. Awesome job. So now, we are going to look up here at our prediction chart again. So, we have already made some predictions and we want to see if our predictions are correct. So, let's look up here. The first prediction that we made, all insects eat plants. Were we correct? Very good. We learned that cockroaches are insects, but they can eat just about anything. So we are going to add that to our prediction chart. So our prediction was not correct, but we did a great job with making that prediction. We also predicted that all insects have antenna. Was our prediction correct that time? Yes, all insects have antenna. And what did we say about their antenna? Very good. They use their antenna to smell. Awesome job, boys and girls. You guys did an amazing job with that today, and I'm so excited to continue to learn with you all. We want to thank you all for joining us today. All rights and credits of this lesson belong to Core Knowledge Language Arts. We would like to thank them for making these materials public and sharing them with us. Now, before we end, I would like to give you some resources so that you can take back what you learned and you can tell it to your friends or your parents. So take a look at these books that you can get. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.